Today we are joined by Kimberly Cheadle, who was sworn into office on September 17, 2022, as the Director of the United States Secret Service. Prior to her appointment, Director Cheadle was Senior Director of Global Security at PepsiCo. Before her role at Pepsi, she served 27 years in the Secret Service. Pursuant to Committee Rule 9G, the witness will please stand and raise her right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Let the record show that the witness answered in the affirmative. Thank you. Uh, we certainly appreciate you being here today and look forward to your testimony. Uh, we're, we normally limit testimony to uh, opening statement to five minutes, but take all the time that you need. Uh, obviously, the rules that, that we will uh, abide by when you're uh, finished with your statement, we will then turn to questions. Each member will have five minutes. And just a note to the members, I'm going to strictly adhere to the five minutes. Uh, once five minutes is up, I will hit the gavel. Uh, if the director is in the process of answering a question, we'll certainly let her uh, finish her answers, and then we will move on. We have, uh, we're going to have about 100% attendance here today, plus a few additional uh, add-ons. So uh, this will be a, a very lengthy hearing, and we want to make sure every member uh, gets their five minutes uninterrupted, uh, to be able to ask these important questions in this very uh, bipartisan hearing today. I now recognize Director Cheadle uh, for your opening statement. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Comer, Ranking Member Raskin, and distinguished members of the committee. My name is Kimberly Cheadle, and I am the Director of the United States Secret Service. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today. The assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump on July 13th is the most significant operational failure of the Secret Service in decades. And I am keeping him and his family in my thoughts. I would like to offer my sincerest condolences to the family of Corey Comparator, a former fire chief and a hero who was killed in this senseless shooting. I would also like to acknowledge those who were injured in Butler, David Dutch and James Copenhagen. And I wish them a speedy recovery. I would be remiss if I did not also extend my condolences on the passing of your colleague, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Ms. Jackson Lee was always engaged in the oversight of the Secret Service, and her passing is a great loss to this body. The Secret Service's solemn mission is to protect our nation's leaders. On July 13th, we failed. As a director of the United States Secret Service, I take full responsibility for any security lapse of our agency. We are fully cooperating with ongoing investigations. We must learn what happened, and I will move heaven and earth to ensure that an incident like July 13th does not happen again. Let me state unequivocally, nothing I have said should be interpreted to place blame for this failure on our federal, state, or local law enforcement partners who supported the Secret Service in Butler. We could not do our job without them. We rely on the relationships built over years of working together to secure events and conduct investigations. Our agents, officers, and support personnel understand that every day we are expected to sacrifice our lives to execute a no-fail mission. As witnessed on July 13th, our special agents shielded former President Trump with their own bodies on stage while shots were being fired selflessly willing to make the ultimate sacrifice without hesitation. I am proud beyond words of the actions taken by the former president's detail, the counter sniper team who neutralized the gunman, and the tactical team who was prepared to act. I will be transparent as possible when I speak with you, understanding though at times that I may be limited in providing a thorough response in this open setting due to associated risks with sharing highly sensitive protective methodologies. I do not want to inadvertently provide you today with inaccurate information. Since January 1st, 2024, the Secret Service has successfully secured over 7,500 sites. Every protective advance comes with its own set of challenges and requires a customized mitigation strategy, including specific assets. Security plans are multi-layered, providing 360 degrees of protection. These layers include personnel, technical, and tactical assets, which are our force multiplier for our protective posture. 
During every advance, we attempt to strike a balance between enabling the protectee to be visible and our protective requirements to be secure. I know this because I have spent 29 years in this agency. I came up through the ranks. I've secured events for every president since President Clinton, supervised on Vice President Cheney's detail, led our training center, oversaw all of the investigations and protective visits in the state of Georgia, supervised on Vice President Biden's detail, and the agency's entire protective mission during the Trump administration. The comprehensive advance process involves collaborative planning between our Secret Service, the protectees staff, local law enforcement partners, and the level of security provided for the former president increased well before the campaign and has been steadily increasing as threats evolve. The security plan included a full assessment of the Butler Farm showgrounds to identify security vulnerabilities and craft a security plan for the protectee, attendees, and the public. Immediately following the assassination attempt, I directed the activation of my crisis center I assembled my executive team to begin surging more protective resources to the former president and to ensure the wellness of our people post-incident, all while securing an active crime scene. I immediately ordered a reevaluation of the Republican National Convention security plan, and I increased the security posture in the National Capital Region for all permanent protectees and sites. At the same time, I initiated a mission assurance investigation within our agency. I have instructed my team that all necessary resources will be dedicated to investigating these matters, we will not rest until we have explored every option and we will leave no stone unturned. But I want to be clear, I am not waiting for these investigations to be completed prior to making changes. Over the past two weeks, we successfully led the planning and execution of the 75th NATO Summit and the Republican National Convention. Over the next few months, we will implement security plans for the Democratic National Convention, the United Nations General Assembly, and have already begun planning and coordinating the 2025 inauguration. It is now more important than ever for the men and women of the Secret Service to remain resilient and to focus on what is necessary to carry out our critical mission. Our agency needs to be adequately resourced in order to serve our current mission requirements and anticipate future requirements. The Secret Service currently protects 36 individuals on a daily basis, as well as world leaders who visit the United States, like Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who arrived in Washington, D.C. today. The coming years will bring an unprecedented heavy protection tempo. I have no doubt that the processes that I have impl implemented during my tenure as director, in addition to my nearly 30 years of experience in this agency, have positioned the Secret Service to be stronger. Our mission is not political. It is literally a matter of life and death, and the tragic events on July 13th remind us of that. I have full confidence in the men and women of the Secret Service. They are worthy of our support in executing our protective mission. I will now answer any questions that the committee may have.